Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Hey, what's up, Street Talk? It's Eric Kim from the Eric Kim Street Talk blog. All right, so let's uh, talk about our best friend, Sergio Laron. So when we study the work of Sergio Laron, think to yourself, why are his photos so beautiful? and Why are they so minimalist? And the thing I want you to especially study in the work of Sergio Laron is thinking, how is he able to create layers in his photos and how is he able to at the same time keep it minimalist and also one thing you see a lot of his photos are triangles so this is one of my favorite photos by him and it's kind of interesting because you have this nice shadow here this woman going down the stairs then you have this girl here in the foreground also going down and the reason why this photo works is you get this nice cutout of this girl here and also you have the different shades you got the gray you got the white you got the black and if you deconstruct the composition you could just see how dynamic it is and i think the secret is because sergio laron shot it pretty head on also i believe most of sergio laron's photos were shot with a 50 millimeter lens which allows for more compression in the photos which allows for more dynamic compositions especially if you want to flatten the perspective and if you want to make photos which essentially accentuate the the compositional elements like all these different perspective lines here and when you're out shooting street photography my practical suggestion would be this don't just try to photograph one subject if you just want to make a good photograph see how you could continue to stack on subjects so finding one subject in the the scene or the background and then just waiting for somebody else to enter the frame and trying to make sure that they're not overlapped with one another in order for you to create a more simple more elegant more minimalist composition and i think also one of the things that sergio laron did very well was always experimenting with the different perspectives so he's not always just shooting head on but he's also playing with putting his camera super low to the ground he's playing with putting his camera super high up in the air and you could see the more you could experiment with your perspectives, the better. So for example, in this photograph, he focused on the background and he put this man here in the extreme foreground. And you could see that often the mistake that a lot of us make in street photography is that we always focus on whoever's closest to us. So, you know, maybe a more newbie street photographer would have just tried to get this kind of focus. But what Sergio Laurent did instead was he put the focus on infinity. And the reason why this works as a photograph is that it adds more depth to the photograph. It is And not only that, but he centered... Uh, the way he probably shot this photo is he literally got right in front of this man, like, head on. And he tried to put his head in between the escalators here. And you can see these perspective lines in the background. This is one of my favorite Sergio Laurent photos. So it's extremely minimalist because you only have three subjects in the frame. And so generally when you're shooting multiple subjects, I would recommend you to try to stick to three subjects. It's generally the easiest for balance and for triangles. It makes for better compositions. So you have three subjects here and their heads are all in a triangle composition, which works really well. But the interesting thing is that there's so much good depth in this photo. You have this man here, the sailor, walking you know, closest to you in the frame, but walking down the steps. You have this man just perched here on the side, just chilling. Then you have this guy all the way on top of the top of the stairs, walking down. And the key thing to notice is that notice that there's no distracting cars or other elements in the frame. You can see the nice triangle with all their heads in a combination here. And not only that, but notice that you see small details which are really nice like you see these stars here you see these nice lines here and also note that you know that there's more depth in the photo because this man closest to you in the frame looks the tallest and this guy is the medium size and this guy is really small in the background
and here I drew out the perspective so you could see once again you have the man here in the foreground walking down the stairs then you have the other man here perched on the side and you have someone in the background walking down So the question you might be thinking to yourself is, okay, it's nice to analyze these compositions after the fact, but how can I practically apply this? So my suggestion is this, when you're out shooting street photography, just try to keep the subjects simple. Try not to have more than three subjects in the frame. And not only that, when you're shooting these kind of scenes, put your focus on whoever's furthest away from you. So I'd recommend in terms of technical settings, either keeping your camera in P or aperture priority mode and keep your ISO relatively high, like ISO 1600. If you're shooting aperture priority mode, shoot at F8 so you have more depth of field. Or if you're just shooting P mode, program mode, where your camera automatically chooses your aperture and shutter speed, keep the ISO still relatively high and just focus on the background and try to get somebody closest to you in the frame, somebody in the mid-ground and somebody in the background. Also, this is a kind of a nice thing is that when you're out shooting street photography, Look for leading lines and just kind of wait for the right subjects to enter the frame. So here, Sergio Leron was very creative with this leading line of this handrail. And you can see how he shot it so head on. And he just waited for somebody in the umbrella to go into the background. And because he was able to crouch down and angle his camera correctly, it looks like this person is walking on top of this <laughs> rail here. You can see the outlines of the leading lines in red and the person in yellow. Simplified. This is also another really elegant photo that almost looks like a painting. So you have in the here the top left corner the frame just blocked out by this canvas of the sail here. Then you have this boat here in the background and you can see once again a little bit of the separation here and then you have this the subjects in the bottom right corner and here again you can see that they're bookend subjects because they're on the far right of the frame and you could see that there's no negative space on the side of them and it just adds for such a beautiful frame and if you take a look at the composition look at the proportions of all the different visual elements in the frame and just how beautiful everything looks together. And so when you're out shooting photos, especially shooting street photography, the biggest mistake we make in street photographers is that our frames are often too cluttered or too messy. What you want to try to do as a street photographer instead is always seek to simplify the scene. Simplify, simplify, simplify. And don't just think that you're just going to take one photo and make a great photograph. You must keep working the scene. You must keep you know, I have no idea how many photos Sergio Laurent shot this scene, but if I was in his shoes, especially if I was shooting digital, I'd shoot like a hundred photos of the scene until I could get the absolutely best version of the photograph. And you could also see one thing Sergio Laurent does a lot of his photos. He does what they call a Dutch angle, is that he doesn't just shoot his photos head on, but he tilts his camera a little bit to the side. And the last photographer that I want to analyze with you goes by the name of, I can never pronounce his last name correctly, it's Nikos Ekamanopoulos, his, his Greek and unfortunately my Greek is not so powerful. But the reason why I really love Nikos' photos is that they're extremely dynamic yet minimalist. So you have this woman here lying down with his hands over her face the man here, the man here, and then the cherry on top, which is the small detail, which I think makes this a great photograph, is this little foot on the right side of the frame. And the reason why I also like this photo is that it kind of gives a nice curve to this photo. And of course, don't forget this dog that's just here on the top of the frame to complete the composition. And I think that photos are much more interesting when there's different elements for your eyes to feast on. And especially when the different elements are put in a curve or an arabesque. And once again, you don't always see these kind of things when you're shooting. But if you can notice it afterwards, then it's probably a great photograph. 
And you could see this composition being repeated a lot in a lot of Nikos' photos. And once again, the devil's in the details, or it's the small details which makes an ordinary photo into what I believe to be a great photograph. So take a look at all these different visual elements here and how they just kind of take your eyes all around the frame. Abstracted. And once again, this arabesque or this curved composition that takes your eyes throughout the frame. Now also realize that Nikos is probably one of the most ambitious street photographers out there. And if you're just a beginner starting off, making these kind of photos will be very difficult. But I think, especially if your goal is to master street photography for yourself, it's important for us to study very ambitious compositions in order for us to a, understand what makes a great composition that's dynamic yet simple, and B, aspire to make photos that are similar and hopefully down the road better. So you could see here once again, he's always putting things in the foreground, middle ground, and background. And the reason why this is so good is that as a viewer, your eyes linger on the scene more. You keep staring, you keep looking into the frame, and you're wondering, oh, what is the open-ended story? So you can see this arabesque or this curve here throughout the frame. And then you kind of look at the photo and you ask yourself, what is this little explosion here and what does it mean? Once again, all these different subjects outlined. And this is another secret to making a great photograph is if you can make a photo that provides more questions than provides answers, or suggests more questions than provides answers, the photos are mysterious and open-ended, the more engaging it will be to your viewer. And you could find that even the most ordinary scenes can make for beautiful photographs. So for example, here is a family just eating, and you can see all the different spoons just in these nice horizontal, uh, sorry, diagonal ways that take your eyes all throughout the frame. And so whenever you're out shooting photos, also treat it kind of like fun visual gymnastics. It's like, how can I find all these different visual elements, like diagonals, shapes, curves, forms, and make an interesting photograph out of it? This is a photograph that's actually very confusing to me. So you essentially have, I guess, somebody's neck or something in the extreme foreground. You got super, super close, and you essentially put the focus on the background. And he has this woman's face here this man's face here. And I think this is the type of photo that a beginner photographer would look at. It's like, wait, what? I don't get it. And I think the purpose is this is that it's to make photos which are confusing to the viewer where the viewer looks at the photos and they're exactly not sure what they're looking at. And honestly, I'm so bored of seeing photos of the internet of just the same standard person in focus. If you want to become a really great street photographer, master the fundamental compositions, the simple head-on figure um, rule of thirds types of compositions. Then as you continue to evolve in your street photography, try to create more ambitious compositions like um, that of Nikos. This is another really great portrait photograph. And this is a secret that a lot of magnet photographers or a lot of photojournalists do is that they'll get really, really close to the subject and put the subject on their head on the bottom of the frame, cut out the nose and only include the eyes on the bottom of the phrase, frame. And you can see here he's made a nice composition with the, the triangles here because you got the jungle gym. And also it's quite surrealistic because you had this kid on top of the frame with his legs poking down. And you can see this outlined. So just as a practical tip, when you see kids playing on playgrounds or you see people on different planes like people high up or people low down or construction workers it's a really ripe scene that can make for really great photographs and this is another great photograph by Nikos so taking photos while things are moving entering or exiting the frame so I think the decisive moment is the curve of this dog's tail jumping out of the frame you have all these different elements and all these different subjects equally spaced around the frame. And also you have this kid's head on the side of the frame, this kind of this cut out bookend subject here. And it's a photo that's very engaging to me. 
it's a photo that just kind of keeps me looking. Also, another tip I'll give to you is when you're shooting street photography, look for people's hands and arms and just try to cut out the arms. So this is a beautiful decisive moment, the moment that a man is putting his hands on top of this guy's head. You got the hat here and you got the hand on top of the thing. So when you're at, whenever you're out shooting street photography, look for hand gestures and get very close and just try to cut out the limbs and figure out what kind of interesting compositions you can make. And once again, you can see here another arabesque or another curved composition of this guy's arm here, curving downwards and out of the frame. And all the things in the background outlined. All right, so the last thing I want to share with you part three is talking about how you can essentially shoot better black and white photos. So what I'd recommend in terms of shooting black and white on your camera is generally I'd recommend just shooting raw or raw plus JPEG and afterwards using my free Eric Kim monochrome 1600 preset or any of my other free presets for free in Adobe Lightroom which are also included. And my recommendation is if your camera supports it also raw plus JPEG high contrast black and white because it'll help you pre-visualize the scenes. And when you're shooting black and white street photography, essentially my recommendation, once again, keep your ISO very high, ISO 1600, 3200, or even 6400, because having a grittier aesthetic actually makes for nicer photos. I would also recommend for you to try to start to see the world in black and white. And there's different ways you could do this. So if you never shot black and white film, I think this is also a great example of trying something out to you could even buy an Ilford disposable XP2 black and white film camera or even the Ilford HP5 standard black and white film camera. And if you start to shoot black and white film photos, you actually force yourself to see black and white. So my suggestion is when you're shooting black and white, try to think about the simplicity, think about the minimalism, think about just a simple white background and the white subjects in the foreground. And even what you could even do on your camera is use a flash to create separation between your subjects in the background. So in this photograph of this woman I shot in downtown LA, initially I asked if I could take a photo of her, but she said no. But I said, oh, can I take a photo of your hands instead? And she said, yeah, sure. So I just did a close up of her fingernails, which ended up being a much more interesting photo. And I shot this with a flash. And I think because you cannot see her face, the photo is actually much more interesting. And in terms of processing your black and white, my general suggestions is when you're opening up your photos in Lightroom, Drag the contrast slider to the left and right until you think it looks good to you. Also, I'd recommend for you to slide the black channels. And generally, I like to what they call crush the blacks, which means make the blacks really, really dark. And to me, it becomes more interesting because it creates more uh, surreal photos. So for example, even this man walking in the shade, his face becomes totally obscured, which becomes a more interesting photo because you wonder what expression he has on his face. And these are some last principles of great black and white street photography that I want to share with you. So the first principle is keep it simple. The biggest mistake we make in street photography is that we try to overcomplicate our photos. By keeping it simple, by having simple backgrounds, simple subjects, if you're starting off and you want to keep your street photography simple, just have one subject in a clean background. The second principle shoot with your heart and soul. The most important thing in street photography is for your photos to be genuine, for the photos to reflect your inner mind state and your emotions, your soul. So when you're out shooting street photography, only photograph people you can empathize with. And this is like one photo I shot in Tokyo. I could really feel the sadness and the mood of this man in the suit. I just shot this through a clear umbrella, Ricoh GR version 2, P mode, ISO 1600 with a flash. And the last principle, simple and dynamic. Keep your photos simple yet dynamic. Dynamic meaning having dynamic emotions, having dynamic movement, having more dynamic compositions by having layers, by having depth. So this photograph, I asked the man to stand in the front. I said, oh, do you mind if I make some photos of you? He said, yeah, sure. And I had him stand in front of a poster and I focused on the eye in the background. So these are some basic principles of great black and white photography. And know that black and white Starting off, it's very simple, and that's why it's so great, is by simplifying your composition, by simplifying 
your images, then you could better highlight the soul and the emotion in your photos, which is the most important thing in street photography.